the June 18, 2013 special meeting of the Monroe County Legislature will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? President Adair. Here. Mr. Ancello. Here. Ms. Andrews. Here. Mr. Antelli. Here. Mr. Barker. Here. Mr. Baroth. Here. Ms. Boyce. Here. Dr. Carbone is excused. Mr. Colby is excused. Mr. Daniele. Here. Mrs. Draw. Here. Mr. Gamble. Here. Mr. Gamina is excused. Mr. Haney is excused. Mr. Hanna. Here. Mr. Howland. Here. Ms. Cayley. Here. Mr. John Lightfoot is excused. Mr. Willie Lightfoot. Mr. McCann, Here. Mr. Michike, Here. Mr. Morelli, Here. Mr. Patterson, Here. Dr. Quattro is excused, Mr. Rocco, Here. Mr. Tucciarello, Here. Mrs. Villario, Here. Mr. Wilcox is excused, Mr. Yolovich. I would ask that we begin this meeting with a moment of silent prayer. Thank you. Legislator Tony Michike will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Legislator Michike. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the authority vested in me as president of the Monroe County Legislature by section 2C-9C1 of the county charter and section 545-5 of the rules of the legislature of the county of Monroe, I hereby direct the special meeting to be called to, considerate, to consider files number 13-0203 and 13-0204 deemed to be matters of urgency pursuant to section 545-24A and dash three of the rules of the Monroe County Legislature of the County of Monroe. There is a hearing loop in place to assist those who are hearing impaired. Anyone requiring assistance should inquire in the legislature clerk's office. We will now hold the public forum. Is there anyone registered to address the legislature tonight? There are no registered speakers this evening. This concludes our public forum. Will the clerk please read the first item on the agenda? Item number one, referral 13-0203. Moved by legislator Tucciarello, second by legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion? Legislator Andrews. Thank you, Mr. President. I do have a few questions um, regarding this this evening. Um, as it's my understanding, it's sending a home rule message uh, regarding an additional wireless surcharge on all cell phone bills for our county. Um, in terms of how that would work, I have some, just a few questions to go through. The current landline charge, if I understand it correctly, is also the 30 cents um, per month. How much revenue is collected from that current landline charge through the president? Uh, Mr. President, the county currently uh, budgeted $1.4 million from the landline surcharge. Through the president, that's for the 2013 year? Mr. President, yes, that is for the 2013 budget year. Thank you. And through the president, then, are you, are you on target to meet, are you online to meet that target for this year in terms of collections? Uh, Mr. President, I... Mr. President, I don't have a uh, printout from our accounting system, so I can't answer that question with 100% specificity, um, but I would be happy to respond at a later date. If you could allow me, I could answer generally, and uh, what I will respond with generally is uh, that budget estimate is in jeopardy given the uh, regular decline in the number of landlines in use today and in the future. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, do you have any idea how much revenue you collected in the past few years in that line? Mr. President, I didn't bring prior year actuals with me. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, can you let me know through the, Mr. President, um, what's that revenue used for now? Mr. President, the uh, current surcharge revenue is used to uh, support the 911 Emergency Communications Operations Center. 
There would be uh, internal county costs uh, that would include the city county operating agreement for the uh, staff and O&M charges, uh, debt service, Thank you. Um, through the president, does that cover the full costs of our contribution towards 911, or do we or not? Uh, Mr. President, the uh, 911 emergency communications budget is a, a little over 17 million dollars, and surcharge revenue is only budgeted at 3.2 million. Thank you, um, Mr. President. If this were to pass this evening and then also pass through the state legislature, when would the law go into effect? Mr. President, I'll have to defer to the county attorney, but my understanding is uh, at quickest, there is at least a 45-day 45 delay, 45 day waiting period after adoption of a local law, but I would like confirmation on that. Mr. President, uh, some of it depends on uh, how quickly the state legislature mm -hmm. acts upon the county's home rule rep message, but we believe that the earliest that uh, our local law would go into place if uh, enacted in, uh, in normal fashion would be September of this year. Thank you, Mr. President. And then what would be your estimate for the rest of 2013 and how much would be collected with the new charge? Mr. President, the way our budget estimate is structured, it's uh, roughly the equivalent of $150,000 per month. Thank you. And through the President, would that be your estimate then for going forward also for 2014? Uh, Mr. President, that certainly would be an excellent starting point, and uh, to the extent we are able to refine that estimate going into the 2014 budget, we will refine it. Thank you. Through the President, then, what's your estimate of the number of um, cell phone lines out there in our county? Uh, Mr. President, the 2013 budget includes a very rough estimate of 500,000 cell phones. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, are, are there other counties that also have the surcharge in place? Mr. President, our understanding is uh, there are 47 other counties that currently assess this surcharge. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, the law reads that the surcharge could be up to 30 cents. Would it be anticipated that it would be established at 30 cents? Uh, Mr. President, it is the county's intention to go with the 30 cent surcharge. Thank you. Um, and would the revenue from the surcharge from the cell phones also be used to support the 911? Mr. President, uh, indeed, 100%. Thank you. And then just one final question in terms of process. Would this body be asked to vote on a local law if this passes through the state legislature as the next step? Through the President, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Legislator Tucciarello. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would just like to make a statement explaining my vote. Um, our 911 center is, is vitally important to our community and public safety. 70% uh, of all inbound calls to our 911 center are from wireless lines uh, compared to landlines. 911 costs are increasing due to national requirements to transition to next gen 911 to accept text messaging, uh, upgraded telephone systems, and to manage increased methods of uh, receiving calls. Uh, we have to take care of our 911 center by properly funding it because the 911 center takes <coughs> care of the folks in our community when we pick up that phone, whether it be a cell phone or a landline or text, uh, we want to have that service there right at our fingertips. It's about emergency response and, and public safety. Uh, so I'm proud of our 911 center as I think everyone uh, in our community should be and I'm happy to be uh, taking it uh, and, and funding it properly. Uh, so this way it'll be here to service our community for years to come. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Legislator Kaylee. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just, I had a couple questions uh, with regards to how this would be charged and not so much uh, for the customers that I probably a wide array of customers have a contract but in the case of a cell phone that is a rechargeable phone or what a lot of people call a burner, um, how would that surcharge be assessed, be assessed through you? Uh, Mr. President, at the uh, present time, state law does not allow 
uh, counties to assess a surcharge on uh, what we call preloadable or prepaid cell phones? Thank you. Um, so, uh, then, so I understand only on cell phone services that uh, maintain a contract with a provider through you? That's correct, Mr. President. And also um, through you, Mr. President, would this cover anyone that maintained a contract that rather not a cell phone but was a data provider on a tablet which has texting capability to 911? Uh, Mr. President, at the current time, state law does not allow for a surcharge on items like tablets. Thank you. Legislator Boyce. Mr. President, um, through the President, can you tell me where does the state surcharge, where do those funds go now? Uh, Mr. President, there is a complicated formula. The state currently assesses a dollar twenty. Fifty cents of that dollar twenty goes into the state general fund. The balance of the 70 cents that remains is divided up within the statute to the state police, to the New York State Revolving Loan Fund, to bond payments for when we put the wireless technology in place back in 2004, um, a, a variety of, uh, of avenues that the balance of the money goes to. And then the remaining of that money, there's a $75 million grant program where counties can compete against each other to try and get a grant to help fund your 911 center. Okay, thank you, Mr. Merlingers. Um, can you also, through the president, tell me how long has the county been seeking these funds uh, through, this, uh, through the state legislature? Uh, Mr. President, through everybody's best recollection, we've been trying since 2002 to uh, levy this surcharge. Thank you. And one further uh, question through the president. Um, Ms. Cayley had started that uh, discussion with regards to these burner phones, but um, in particular, um, how about uh, the cars equipped with emergency services? Does that come under uh, the same, like an OnStar or things of that nature? Mr. President, that's a great question. I, I will say it's a complicated question because um, I believe very commonly OnStar is sold with uh, General Motors vehicles. Uh, if there is a phone number associated, many cars use their own personal cell phone through that device. Um, so I'm not sure I can answer that question with 100% accuracy, but if your vehicle's system uses your own cell phone, can I call it Bluetooth? Uh, then yeah, you're gonna pay the 30 cents. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Legislator Andrews. Mr. President, um, I rise also to indicate that I, I will support the home rule message today. Um, clearly, it's important that we do provide the funding to support the 911 operations center. I was pleased to hear this money will be dedicated to do that work. Um, it's also my understanding from talking to Legislator Haney, who wasn't able to be here tonight, that uh, when this charge was first um, originated that really was before cell, cell phones were so prevalent and so that's why that charge wasn't applied to cell phones at that point in time. So um, I will be supporting this this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Legislator Patterson. Thank you. I rise to explain my vote. 911 is an important component of our community. Provides a great deal of public safety to so many people and it is a wonderful organization. This is an important tax, and I do feel that it needs to be passed. But given the nature in which this has been brought before this body, I can't support it. We have an obligation to be deliberative. We have an obligation to move in a manner that leaves our constituents with the belief or notion that we are doing things for them and not to them. I am deeply concerned that our constituents will come away from this meeting today with the belief that once again, their government has chosen to tax them, has left no space, no time, no room for their voice to be heard, and is not abiding or acting in an upright fashion. 
we can do better than this. We were here a month ago with something similar. I understand there's a difference. I understand that this is important. I understand that we've been trying to pass this since apparently 02. And I understand the whole notion of Albany and you've got to work within their time frame. But sometimes you need to work within our time frame. You need to work within the sensibilities of your community. And right now, I believe that the sensibilities of our community have been greatly abused by the manner in which we do government in this body. So even though I am in favor of this tax, I will not be voting in favor of it today. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Legislator Holland. Mr. Super, or, uh, Mr. President, I raised to- I haven't been uh, called that in a while. <laughs> For a while. <laughs> I always, I always enjoyed the title. title. You? I always enjoyed the title. Okay. Anyways, Mr. President, uh, I just want to uh, raise in support of this uh, tax or surcharge, however you want to call it. I think the cooperation between the city and the county in this example of 911 is one of the greatest things that you're going to see in this area of New York State. Everyone benefits from it: uh, county residents, city residents, and to continue providing that high level of service and continue the cooperation with the city in providing that service, I think is very important and that's why I'll vote for it. Thank you. Legislator Boyce. I really don't have a question. Well, yes, I do actually have a question through the president to the administration. Um, since this is something that we've been trying to pass since 2002 or actually have somebody sponsored in the state legislature. Um, as much as we don't like to do these meetings on a, a moment's notice, sometimes these things need to, to, to happen in a moment's notice because of, of the how this is carried through the state legislature. Can somebody on the administration tell us, um, you know, who sponsored the bills for us and, and, and the method by which we have to do this in this expeditious way? Through the president, uh, these bills were sponsored by Assemblyman Morelli in the State Assembly and Senator Nizzolio in the State Senate. Uh, after, if this body approves these measures, they will be um, sent to Albany in their official form, at which point they will be accepted by the state legislature um, and go through their own committee process. And then we would hope for an affirmative vote uh, before the, their full legislative bodies by the end of the session which we anticipate would be Thursday or Friday of this week. Is there any other qu questions, discussions at this time? If not, I'll move to a roll call vote. Mr. Tucciarello? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Ancello? Yes. Mr. Antelli? Yes. Mr. Barker? Yes. Mr. Baroth? Yes. Ms. Boyce? Dr. Carbone is excused. Mr. Colby is excused. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Mrs. Draw? Yes. Mr. Gamble? Yes. Mr. Gamina is excused. Mr. Haney is excused. Mr. Hanna? Yes. Mr. Howland? Yes. Ms. Cayley? Yes. Mr. John Lightfoot? Yes. Mr. Willie Lightfoot? Yes. Mr. McCann? Yes. Mr. Michike? Mr. Morelli? Yes. Mr. Patterson? Yes. Dr. Quattro is excused. Mr. Rocco? Yes. Mrs. Valerio? Yes. Mr. Wilcox is excused. Mr. Yolovich? Yes. President Adair? Yes. 20 to 3, motion passes. Next item. Item number 2, referral 13 204. Second. Moved by Legislator Tucciarello, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing none, I'll move to a roll call vote. Mr. Tucciarello? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Ancello? Yes. Mr. Antelli? Yes. Mr. Barker? Yes. Mr. Baroth? Yes. Ms. Boyce? Yes. Dr. Carbone is excused. Mr. Colby is excused. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Mrs. Draw? Yes. Mr. Gamble? Yes. Mr. Gamina? Oh, Mr. Gamina is excused. Mr. Haney is excused. Mr. Hanna. Mr. Holland. 
Ms. Cayley, Mr. John Lightfoot, Mr. Willie Lightfoot, Mr. McCann, Mr. Michike, Mr. Morelli, Mr. Patterson, Dr. Quattro is excused, Mr. Rocco, Mrs. Valerio, Mr. Wilcox is excused, Mr. Yolovich, yes. President Adair. Yes. 20 to 3, motion passes. Okay. Um, if there being no other business at this time, Mr. Tucciarella. Mr. President, uh, there being no other business, uh, I, we stand adjourned until Tuesday, July 9th, 2013 at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming in tonight.